in the Academy of Science, and he saw the announcements. At what day it will be the meeting of Presidium of Academy of Science, the program, the discussion of the limiting age for the director of the institutes. <laughs> so I completely share the point of view of Semyonov that 80, indeed, it is the prime time of life for a man. Unfortunately, <laughs> Yuval is absent, but there are, there are other people who, I believe, are, will agree with me. Okay, then I, do, uh, I would like to uh, d uh, tell you something about Landau School, and the reason is that uh, Landau's theoretical school and um, the theoretical school here in Israel have many um, um, many in common. And first of all, I believe uh, it is a common spirit in both schools. And also, uh, there are also the personal relations, because few people from Landau School are now working here, and or they're working here. And uh, first, as I would like to mention, Maimon, who was working here and who was a uh, close friend and Landau and did some work with him and also Marinov who was working in Haifa in Technion and also belonged to the Landau school and now there are also people of the second generation of Landau school who are here Frankfurt, Levin and Goldman in Beersheba and so on. Therefore there is some interrelation and some connection. And so I believe that to tell you something about is it's uh, um, in one on another way it will be interesting for you. First of all, you know that even when he was young and he was about 25, Landau decided first to write the course for all theoretical physics and finally, you know that it, uh, it, 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 uh, he and his followers succeeded to do it. It was the first course of the whole theoretical physics, and unfortunately, it is the last one. It, 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 now it is clear that it will be no more courses for the whole theoretical physics. And uh, from one side and from the other side, he would like to um, erect a school of physics, uh, physicists who could follow and who knew the whole course of theoretical physics. And the way in which such people could arise is, was to, that they must give the exams of the whole course to Landau himself. And I can show you the list which was uh, the names of the people who succeed in giving up such an exams. This list was written by Landau himself in... Okay. <laughs> it, it was done just about a few weeks before this tragic accident in which uh, Landau was, uh, was strongly injured and uh, after which he survived but could not uh, be recovered to the um, uh, activity as a physicist. And you see this is the whole, the whole list of people who passed the exams. It starts from 33 and the first person who succeeded was Kampanietz who unfortunately died and not uh, in uh, rather young. Then it is uh, Evgeny Lipschitz, Achiezer, Pomeranchuk, then a Hungarian um, physicist. I mean, Sorry? I mean, the date. That, is, uh, the, uh, the, uh, that is the date. The number is the date where the person finished the exams, not started by finished. And then the next uh, 
uh, it symbolized the degree which was, uh, such a person has in the time when Landau was writing, writing this uh, list. That means at the end of the, uh, the year 61. And D, Russian D, means the doctor degree. And you know that in Russia there are two degrees, candidate lowest and doctor highest. And uh, the, uh, in Russian, G, T, that means the corresponding member of Russian Academy of Science. And when it is in the bracket that refers to uh, Achiezer, Achiezer was um, not a member, not a corresponding member of the whole Russian Academy of Science, but a corresponding member of Ukrainian Academy. The fault is uh, in the brackets. <laughs> okay. I will not list all others. I would like only to mention that starting from about 40, 54 and or maybe 55, um, Landau stopped to take the exams by him himself and the exams were taken by his scholars, Abrikosov, Kalatnikov and others. And you see that influence the results because you see that in the left hand side of uh, this list of almost all people you know, but in the right hand side it is, the situation is different. And that means that not only the knowledge of the course was important, but the person who takes the exams. In the left hand side, it was Landau himself, roughly. OK. Then I. Uh, well, the uh, is your opinion? Yes, yes. <laughs> I will not go. Uh, I will describe uh, how it proceeds, uh, proceeded by my own exam, uh, by my own experience. Maybe it's enough. <coughs> First of all, in, uh, uh, at, in, at the end of 40s, when I gave the exams, th at that time existed only three books from the Landau course, Mechanics, the Classical Field Theory, and um, the Mechanics of the Condensed Media, and the first part, classical part of statistics. And all other uh, exams should proceed in, in such a way that the student should learn and read and learn the original papers. And it was Im implicitly supposed that the students know well English and German. And for example, I show you the program which was in my time, which I studied, the program on quantum mechanics. It, it was only partly based on the book, only the first part up to here is based on the book and all hours you can look for the references what should the students study there are two very large papers by Bette one referred about 100 pages on the deep, what is now called deep and elastic scattering on electrons on atom it is referred to the point 32 it is a very big paper in Deutsche, in German journal, Annalen der Physik. And there is a, a paper, very high level, by Rosenthal and Murphy in the Review of Modern Physics and so on. Therefore, it was a hard task to study all these papers and then um, to give the exams. And how the exam proceeds? It um, was... Um, such a way that a student called, and it was not a, a problem to call to Landau, and even to enter in this game. It, for example, I called Landau and said that I would like to be your student. Yes, please come say after tomorrow. At what time and so on. Then the first exam was simply the solving some mathematical problems to take integrals, to solve differential equations, some uh, problems from vector algebra, and so on. And the exam, all, uh, then Landau gave maybe the whole program for, for a whole program for all courses. Uh, it was about, at that time, nine programs. And then I shall 
study and call him again what, and say that I would like, say, to give you the exam on quantum mechanics. Again, come tomorrow. No. And when students arrive in his house, in his house, in just in, at the garderobe, Landau asks that please put here all the books, all notes, everything, and go uh, in the room. And in the room, it was a table and nothing more. And Landau gave a few pages of blank paper, and st the exam starts. First, Landau gave gave a problem. And the students start to solve. And Landau went away, but in 20 minutes came back and looked about the shoulder, what the student is doing. He was silent. He looked, and if he was silent, that was a good sign. If not, Landau said again nothing, but said something <clears throat> and went away. That was a bad sign. Then <laughs> I don't know what happens if the student failed, because I have no such an experience. <laughs> but in one case, I was very close to fail. And that proceeds when I gave up the, exams, the exam on statistical uh, physics. In this case, Landau gave me, me a problem. I started to write. In 20 minutes, he came and said, <clears throat> But I continue to, uh, in the way, I, I believe that I am going in a correct way, and I continued. In 20 minutes, he came back and said, <coughs> that was a very bad sign. And just in this time, in this time came Lipschitz. Lipschitz looked in my paper also and said, Now, while we are spending time, threw him away. <laughs> but Landau said, let us give him 20 minutes more. They went out. And in, after 20 minutes, Landau came back, looked in my papers, and at that time, I finished the calculation, and I had the answer. Landau looked on the answer, and the answer was correct. Then he studied more carefully what I did and found that I solved the problem correctly, but not in the way in which he expected. That mm, was OK. Lipschitz also came. They gave me a few simple questions, and the exam was over. That, after, and then what happens after? When all courses were given, then Landau officially said that you are my scholar. That, but this does not mean any privileges, only obligations. Because uh, a Landau school, uh, scholar could participate at Landau seminar, but everybody could participate. And everybody could ask questions and take part in the discussion. Therefore, in this aspect, there, there is no difference. But the scholar has an obligation, and the obligation there that the scholar should present the review on the physical review. After the seminar, it, in seconds, in alphabetical order, Landau was going with such a person in the library, and he took the last issue of physical review and marked all the paper which must be reviewed on the next seminar. It was about a 10 or 20 or 12 papers, and on any subject, from alums to high energy physics. And the, the speaker should present all these papers, but in have his own opinion about any paper. And it was such a proverb that the speaker is a person who takes the personal responsibility for all errors in physical review. <laughs> and indeed, when the, he, a person presents the review of a paper, then Landau asks question, and anybody in the audience? 
and in the audience there are the people who are specialists in this field. And the speaker, not, not in all Koyas, was um, the specialist. Especially for me, it was a problem just with alums. I was not a specialist in alums, and Randall liked this subject very much. It was <laughs> very strange, but nevertheless it happened. And it was such a few cases when the speaker failed. He presented one paper in a wrong way. The other paper also in a wrong way. Then Landau said, go away. Let's let us listen to another speaker. And, and if somebody failed, uh, say, two times, then this person was expelled from the scholars. And I can mention one person. You know him quite well. It is Levich, Professor Levich, who was later the refusnik and so and so, a very qualified person. Nevertheless, he failed two times. Landau said, you did not prepare your lesson. Therefore, you cannot participate. Of course, after a year or something like that, he was, uh, came again. And uh, <laughs> so he was, <laughs> but nevertheless, for one year, he was punished. OK. In such a way, maybe I will stop on this point about the seminar and Landau School. But I would like to mention also to a uh, few words, to say a few words about Landau personality. Because usually it is uh, not a quite correct understanding of such a great person. First of all, he was a very modest person in his estimation, his own level in physics, his own ability, and so on and so on. And uh, an ex uh, one example. You know that Landau classified all theoretical physics in classes, starting from the first class, the highest class, up to the five class, the lowest class. And the difference between two classes was uh, by an, uh, an order of magnitude. Therefore, it was such a logarithmic scale. To the class one half, it, in the class one half was only one person, Einstein. And the five class, the laws, there are pathologists, the people who are producing the pathological papers. And himself, Landau, in the 30s, referred as a physicist, as a theoretician of a class two at one half, not very high. And after he uh, did the theory of phase transition, he decided to push himself and one half higher. And therefore, he referred to himself as a physicist of a second class, not the first. And never he put here uh, he, himself higher. Therefore, it is quite modest estimation. The other example is uh, uh, that he estimated his ability, uh, say, in quantum field theory, in uh, quantum electrodynamics as a low one. I heard many times that Pomeranchuk um, tried to convince him. Dow, now, it was at the end of the 40s, the beginning of the 50s. Dow, now in quantum electrodynamics, it is a very interesting time. You must work here. It is just for you. Landau's answer was always the same. I cannot solve the problems of infinities. It is above my ability. I will not work here. And still, he had no idea, which, is, uh, which was later in 54, about the summing of logarithmic terms. And you know, well known paper by Landau, Abrikosov, and Halitnikov. He did not work in that, but just in this paper. He has an idea that indeed he solved the problem of infinity. But, but unfortunately, he has in his mind what we are calling now the asymptotic freedom. And it was a result by the, uh, arising from the error in the sign when he summed the 
polarization operator the sign was wrong and um, he in fact got the asymptotic freedom in the erroneous way in quantum electrodynamics okay maybe uh, i will now go to another subject uh, which is related quite different um, which is related to the problem of a Soviet atomic pro project and the role which was played by Landau School, Landau himself, and our tradition. I will, since I have not too much time, I will not speak about the first stage about uh, about the first stage of the atomic project, the atomic bomb. Nevertheless, that histo histo this part of history is also interesting because, for example, the theory of nuclear reactors was constructed in Soviet Union in the in completely independent way, and it was constructed mainly by Pomeranchuk and others. It, and it was better than in the United States when the similar work was done by Wigner. Uh, but I will not speak about this, and I will speak about the problem of hydrogen bomb. And now um, it is necessary to go with some excourse in the politics. First of all, I am sure, and I insist on this statement, that Stalin would like to start the Third World War somewhere in 53 and 54. And it is, I, I uh, believe that it is a correct statement and there are few facts which are known now about which uh, confirm this statement. The first fact is that in 52, Stalin um, gives the order to um, organize 100 new division of bombers, 100. It is an enormous number. The second fact is that is in the memoirs of a defense minister of Czechoslovakia, Čepička, it is mentioned that in 52, Stalin organized a meeting of minister of defense of all uh, uh, so-called socialist countries. And on this meeting, Stalin told to his ministers that he expected a new war in a, a year or so on, and he ordered to this minister, to this ministers, to strengthen their army, to increase their power, and so on and so on. And also, the, Sorma, the Soviet army was increasing in these years. Nevertheless, that it was much more stronger uh, than the army uh, of Western country in Europe. Why uh, Stalin uh, could have the idea that uh, he could win such a Third World War? First of all, the Soviet army in the Europe was much stronger than the Western army. Therefore, such a war would be a blitzkrieg. And therefore, in Europe, uh, there were very good chances to have a victory in a very short time. You know that just in this time, in the end of the 40s and 50s, there were attacks of communist forces. First of all, China was, became communist. Then there are communist army in, in the China, in, in in Vietnam, in Malaya, in Philippines, and on the, in the whole Southeast. But the problem was very hard, and Stalin understood it well. And there he should solve two very hard problems. First of all, the, the previous war finished and was ended only eight or ten years before. Therefore, it was necessary to take the people, the political problem, to take the people and push it in a new war. It was extremely hard political problem. And second, the problem of atomic bomb. 
because it was a strong preference of United, in United, of United States. United States say in the year 950 have about 300 atomic bombs, and Soviet Union have maybe few, three, five atomic bombs. Therefore, it was no comparison. How Stalin solved, or not solved, but tried to solve these two very hard problems. The first, political. It was necessary to put the people in the angry, in the hate, that all the peoples hate somebody you know, on the other side of the ocean. It was impossible, because nobody had seen Americans. And it was very hard to, uh, with propaganda and even with terror, to take such an angry, such a hate against Americans. What could, could be? It, it was necessary to have enemy, an enemy just here, that everybody could see an enemy as, a soy, as its neighbor. And Stalin found a way. Such enemy were the Jews. Everybody could see the Jew. And everybody, it was easy to explain to them that it's your enemy and it is managed from the ocean. And then transfer the internal enemy in the external enemy. And you see, if you look on the history, that the anti-Semitic campaign started somewhere in 47, 48, then it was increasing, the wave was increasing very strongly. I mentioned the execution of an anti-fascistic Jewish committee, the campaign against the cosmopolitanism, and finally the so-called affair of, of doctors, where 20 uh, professors, almost all Jews with one or two exceptions, were arrested and accused that they tried instead of treatment, they tried to poison all the leaders of the party. And then, it, it's such a, it was official, uh, 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 official uh, 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 accusation, and then it was spread rumors that all doctors everywhere in the country are enemies, and they try to kill their patients. And I, I, by myself, I heard many times in the streets, in the shops, that somebody, one person is telling to another, I will not go in this clinic because there is a Jewish doctor. I am afraid that he will poison me or will, he will kill me and so and so and so. Therefore, it was indeed he succeeded in this propaganda and very dangerous. Then, the, what was the plan? The plan was the following, it is known now, that it will be a card, and after it will be the decision to, uh, all will be, doctor will be the, um, it will be the decision uh, to uh, execution, and they will be hanged on the Red Square in Moscow. Then it was, the next step was that the prominent Jews will sign a letter to Stalin, in which they agreed that indeed the Jews as a nation are guilty in such a crime, as a nation, because they allowed that among them there are some crime elements. But they asked the government, the Stalin, in, in such a situation to be mercy and not to execute all the Jews, but send them in the far east in, in, in such a way to save the nationality. And it was proposed that, that the echelons will go to the east, it will be attacked by people on the way. And of course, what could be expected, that the reaction from the west, from America, and so on and so on, and that it will be the political action which will support this plan for the war. And indeed the campaign with doctors started at the end of 
uh, on 52, and then it could be that they will be um, uh, such action with letter and so on and so on. And uh, it is known now, but till now this letter is not published. But I know people who signed it. I know, absolutely. I will not mention their name, the Jews, but uh, I know. Okay. That, that is the political action. Now you can see what, how it was correlated with the military action. Just at the end of the 40s, at the beginning of the 15s, Sakharov has invented his hydrogen bomb. And the power of this hydrogen bomb, it was expected, will be about two, uh, 20 times or maybe 30 times more than the atomic bomb. And it would be possible to construct a few hydrogen bombs and perform the test. Indeed, uh, in effect, this test was done in 53 after Stalin's death, but in a short time. Therefore, the plan was, of course, not to start the atomic war against the United States, but we use the, this atomic bomb, this uh, hydrogen bomb, as a tool for blackmail. If it will be a test, successful test, as Stalin expected, and he has all the reason, because he, know about, he knew about uh, Sakharov war, and so on and so on. And uh, <coughs> he expected that it, uh, the United States will in doubt if to use atomic weapon or not, because we, they will be afraid of a uh, hydrogen bomb attack on the United States. And there were definite, definite plans for such an attack. You can read it in Sakharov memoirs, but I no, knew it ja, such plans um, when, because I participated in the bo uh, hydrogen bomb um, in project, uh, I will tell you in a few minutes, also, and what was said, that such a very powerful hydrogen bomb, and it was discussed, the hydrogen bomb, with absolutely unlimited power, will be transported in a hidden way by a ship to the coast, American coast, and it, then it, it, it will explode. In Sakharov memoir, you in, in some other places, uh, particularly in the memoirs of Alexandrov, who was later the president of Academy of Science, is discussed another possibility, few hydrogen bombs underwater, which produce a very strong tsunami, which will go on the American coast, and also destroy very large territory with many million people die. Therefore, it, Stalin expects that Americans will be afraid and will, they, will be not be, they will not use the atomic weapons. Now, I, in the last minutes, maybe I will tell you about the hydrogen bomb project in which I participated. It is, the history of this bomb uh, project starts from Fermi. In 1941, or maybe in 1942, Fermi, in the conversation with Edward Teller, suggested the idea of a bomb, hydrogen bomb, which later uh, was called the classical super. And Teller was working for many years, totally about uh, eight or maybe nine years, uh, on this project. And the idea was the following. It is a cylinder filled by deuterium, liquid deuterium. And at one end of the cylinder, it is initiator. Initiator, at first it is atomic bomb, and then a mixture of deuterium and tritium. And in, uh, you know that in the mixture of deuterium and tritium, during the, uh, because of the reaction D plus T, it is, necess it, it is not needed to have very high temperature. The temperature are lower than in the, than in the mixture of D plus D. Therefore, this uh, 
atomic bomb plus DT will play the role of the initial. But after the explosion of this part, it is expected that it will go a shock wave along the cylinder. And if this system will work, then you can have the <coughs> bomb of all unlimited power because this cylinder can be down as long as you wish. <coughs> the Ethereum was che rather cheap and there is a very restricted amount of tritium. And for Stalin, of course, as well for American, it is quite important, especially for Russia, because in the year 50, it, there was no tritium in Soviet Union. And uh, I participated just in this activity bec um, because I started to work on nuclear reactor and just in the year 950, it just because it came from above, uh, I don't know from whom, the d decree to start immediately to the construction and further project of reactor for production tritium. That came, I can tell you, in the, almost the exact date, in May 951. And it was pushed very strongly. Okay, and, but what was the problem with this cylinder? And uh, Wigner, uh, um, sorry, Teller, worked on this for a few years, and also uh, by spies, uh, the uh, Soviet Union had the information about this this project, but without uh, some details, but with general idea. Okay, therefore, just in Soviet Union also, this activity started, and uh, for a few years, the group uh, headed by Zildovich started to work about this system. But the main problem arises just when Teller reported this work on the conference in Los Alamos in 46. Then after Teller talk, Bette did a remark that in such a system, it will be a very dangerous for uh, its success uh, moment because at high temperature, there are the production of gamma rays, Bremsstrahl. And the Bremsstrahl will go out and will result to cooling of this system. But this fact and this process was accounted by them. But as mentioned better, because the, uh, the absorption lens of gamma rays, which arise from Compton scattering, is comparable uh, with the size of the, with the diameter of this uh, cylinder, then it will go the inverse Compton process. Indeed, the spectrum of Bremsstrahlung is uh, soft. Therefore, the mean energy of Bremsstrahlung of gamma rays is lower than the mean energy of electrons. Therefore, in the Compton scattering, the gamma rays will increase their energy and go out with higher energy than from direct Bremsstrahlung process, beta Geiger process. And this fact must be accounted. And it was not very easy calculation. And Taylor started to perform and independently uh, the Zeldovich group. And the conclusion, I don't know what conclusion and the first time was achieved by Treman, by uh, Taylor, but I know what situa the situation with Zeldovich group. They solved all the problem and found that the energy balance is zero that as uh, the, the amount of energy produced in nuclear reaction is just equal to the amount of energy going out. But the accuracy of calculation of the coefficient, it was called the Comptonization coefficient, was given by a factor of two. Therefore, if this factor will go in one direction, this system will not work, and if in another, it will indeed work. And Zeldovich could not performed such a calculation, and this calculation was given to the group of Pomeranchuk to which I belong. And therefore, I started to work just on this problem. It was a very hard calculation, a numerical calculation, very complicated. 
the fine, I will not speak about the time, and the result, fine, uh, luckily, was the following. The balance was negative. That means that if we take as one the amount of energy produced in nuclear collisions, uh, the nuclear reaction, then the amount of energy going out is 1.2. It was, we were sure the accuracy about 10%. Therefore, we could insist that indeed the balance is negative and the problem was closed. And in la much later, it becomes known that Teller came to the same conclusion, that the balance of energy is negative and the system is not work, and therefore all the mind can avoid, luckily, this very dangerous, uh, very dangerous system. Okay. But the Sakharov work was maybe, no, no, I will not finish. I will say a few words about the ethical problem. And of course, it is necessary to say. You know that the hydrogen bomb project started in the United States. Many physicists, very high level physicists, were against such a project. You know the Oppenheimer affair, you know that Better, who was the head of a theoretical department on the, in Los Alamos, don't want to continue this work and uh, went to uh, Cornell and started pure scientific work and many hours. In Soviet Union, th this does not proceed. And almost all people were working and uh, quite uh, energy, uh, energy, uh, energetical on the hydrogen problem, uh, bomb problem, but there were exceptions. And the most important exception was Landau. And you can read it in Sakharov memoirs, just in the time when Sakharov was working on hydrogen bomb. Sakharov mentioned, it is a very, I ask you to read this part, it is a very short remark and for a half a page. Sakharov mentioned that one time he came to Landau in the Institute of Physical Problems. They discussed the problems probably about the hydrogen bomb and then they went out in the garden. In the garden Landau said Sakharov, I don't like this deal. And Sakharov remarked that Landau means the hydrogen bomb and his participation in this deal. Why? asked naively Sakharov. And the answer was, too much noise. And this is typical for Landau. If he sees that his partner don't understand what is evident from his point, Landau point of view, then it is better, the best way to stop the discussion and say, say something nonsense. And it is just what he did. And after Stalin dead, immediately, when this becomes known, Landau was very enjoyed. He even danced and cried, I will stop all my work in this problem. I am not afraid anymore. Maybe at this point I will finish. Thank you very much, Rory. I, I believe that there will be no questions. Well, we don't know. Anyone? Ah, uh, yes. I, I have read that uh, it was the idea of Sakharov to send uh, ships to the United States, no? Uh, the Sakharov idea was slightly different. They use a very big torpedo. Ah, torpedo. Torpedo. Yeah, <laughs> For, it, it will be a ship which is uh, camouflaged, and on the ship it will be a very big torpedo. The ship will go to the United States core, and then the, it will descend a torpedo, or maybe a few, on the ports. And because Sakharov uh, is uh, right, he was a, um, a honest man. He right that he um, understood from the sailors that if the ports are destroyed, then the war on the sea is uh, failed. 
And that yes. was Sakharov's idea, yes. Yes, it's strange for Sakharov, no? Yes. And uh, it is such a detail that Sakharov discussed this problem with a sailor, with a Admiral for, uh, Famine. And the sailor said, we sailors are not fighting with uh, civilian population. And after that, Sakharov was ashamed. That was in 50. In 60, it was quite different person, Sakharov. He changed as very essentially. Yes. Any other question? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, you haven't mentioned uh, Rosenberg's affair. Uh, what is your opinion? Was it really important, the quantity of information they passed? Or it was I believe that they indeed they trans uh, transferred yeah, the information. Yeah. Okay, but, but to what extent it was really important for Russian? I don't know what part the information was important. But I don't know what part was given to Rosenbergs and what in, in uh, by using yeah, yeah, yeah. another channels. No, no, but but, but the information. The importance of information. Did yes. It really boost the. Yes, I and I can tell you definitely what part. First of all, the fact that plutonium exists. Mm -hmm. It was a unknown in Soviet Union. It came just from United States. And when Kurchatov read it, he understood immediately the importance, and he marked it by the red pencil. I don't know how it came to Rosenberg or in another way. I the don't first know. Russian bomb was not with plutonium. With plutonium? Oh, yeah. Ah. Yes, oh. yes. It, it was from the first reactor. The diffusion plants came into operation a few years later. It was just from plutonium. It was extremely important, but it speed up to say two, three years. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Just, just a comment about the last question. Hans Bethe gave an interview in which he said that the Rosenbergs saved the Soviet Union three months, but Klaus Fuchs oh. saved it two years. Well, that just what I don't know what part was going in this way. I don't know. I have no such information. But I just what I claimed that about two, maybe three years, yeah. something like that. Fuchs who spoiled Fuchs the hydrogen Fuchs. program. He was completely useless. But for the first no, not uh, the first information about this classical super probably came from Klaus Fuchs. The first information. Any other question? If I may ask you a question. You said how Oppenheimer felt in the States, and what about Sakharov and London? May I ask you what your opinion at that time was? Did you change your mind? Mine? Yes. I, have, I was a young person, and it, it was, I considered well, the first. Uh, first uh, one year, say, in, of my war, maybe two, second, uh, as uh, my duty. And it was a very strong pressure because uh, I was only one Jew from the whole faculty who get a good position over uh, all others, and it was enough Jews in the physical faculty where I studied. Where ha they have no positions. And I have the only one person who had a good position in Alihanov Institute. Thanks to Alihanov, first of all, and Pomeranchuk. Therefore, it, I consider uh, you cannot separate the personal point of view from uh, the four. Later, I understood it better. But in that time, I considered that is my duty. Any other question? But I was very glad when the final conclusion that this system will not work. I was very glad. And even more, it was suggested by Pomeranchuk and our authorities. When it stopped, it becomes clear that it will not work to continue work using something new ideas. And, I, and it was suggested that I will be ahead of this war. I refused. Before in 52, I understood something. If there are no other questions, then I thank all the speakers for the afternoon.